Welcome to this week's video dealing with Pearson's chi-square and Fisher's exact test in JAS. The main thing to understand with Pearson's chi-square and Fisher's exact test is that we are dealing with two categorical variables or two nominal variables. So when we want to compare the distribution of one variable inside of the other variable, when we cross those variables, we're going to be dealing with Pearson's chi-square and Fisher's exact test. Now, the difference between Fisher's exact test and Pearson's chi-square, we're going to learn about in this video. But basically, when you cross these, these variables across each other, you're going to find out how many observations in one variable occur inside the buckets of the other variable. In each one of those buckets, in order to use Pearson's chi-square, there has to be at least five or more observations. Whereas Fisher's exact test, that is relaxed a little bit. You only need one or two. It's best to have two or three, but you can survive with one or two observations. So <clears throat> let's dig in. And again, we're going to be looking at our data that we collected at the beginning of this year. So here's our survey data. Um, and notice in here we have a lot of categorical variables, whether or not you're a student, yes or no, whether or not you're male or female, um, your age category, uh, job status. So we're going to look at three examples in this video. The first example we're going to look at is job status versus student. So in order, and again, notice that student is a yes or no variable, that's a categorical variable, and job status is also a yes or no variable, so that's a categorical variable. And again, when we want to compare two categorical variables, that's when we're going to use Pearson's chi-square or Fisher's exact test. Now, in order to run these tests, I'm going to go to frequencies, and then down to contingency tables. Now, I have my rows and my columns, and I want to put each of my variables in one of these, and in this case, I'm going to put students in my columns and job in my rows. Now, notice over here, off the bat, this gives me a two by two table or it gives me my table of how many people fell in each bucket. So in this case, <clears throat> if you have a job, yes, and you're a student, yes, there were 85 observations. And again, job, yes, student, no, there was 375 observations. Job, no, student, yes, there was 19 observations and job no and student no, there was 35 observations. Again, in order to run Pearson's chi-square, I have to have at least five observations in each of these buckets, which is completely fine in this case. However, if any time I have less than five observations, then I have to use Fisher's exact test. If at any time I have zero observations in any of these buckets, then I don't have enough evidence to run a statistical test. And in that case, my p-value is just in, invalid, NA. All right. So now I also want to make this a little bit easier for you all to understand. Now it's hard for you to say, I don't know, compare 85 to 375 or say 85 out of 104 compared to 375 out of 410. That's hard for uh, our minds to understand the differences. And so what I want to do is show you a couple options. Now the first option is this this chi-square test. So under statistics, make sure that the chi-square test is selected. It's selected by default. However, if I scroll down, I can also go to cells and then look at column percentages. And this, what it does is it gives me the column percentages. So what percent of students, student yes, what percent of students have a job? So it's 85 divided by 104, and that's 81.73%. Same thing, uh, what percent of people who are not students have a job, and that's 375 out of 410, or 91.463%. However, by looking at these percentages, these column percentages, that really allows me to see you know, a better understanding of what the chi-square test is doing. And if you look, the people who are unemployed, so job, no, what percent of them what percent of the students are unemployed versus what percent of the non-students are unemployed? Notice that it's 18% of students don't have a job versus only 8.5% of non-students don't have a job. And that's more than two times. So if I multiply 8.5 times two, then I'm gonna get 17 and 17 is still less than 18. So the percent of students who don't have a job is more than two times more than people who are not students who don't have a job. That's what's leading to this you know, significant chi-square. So again, on my chi-square, let's look at the, the, the data down here. First off, my chi-square, the, the symbol for chi-square is this, it's called a chi-square, but it's basically a script X um, with a squared. 
So the, the, the chi-square statistic is 8.358. The DF, or degrees of freedom, is 1. And the p-value is 0 0.004. The other thing to notice is that the n is in here. And so when we look at APA format for writing a chi-square statistic, I'm actually going to use all of this data. Okay, The chi-square statistic, 8.358. The degrees of freedom, 1. The p-value and the sample size. So let's flip over and look at that. So here it is in APA format. So first off, I'm going to write this chi-square symbol. And again, as far as the test or exam is concerned, you just put a capital X and then put a two next to it. You can get to a square on there, but I'm not. I'm, I'm, anyways, you can figure that out if you want to. That's great. If you don't figure it out, just put X2. All right. Now, you do need to put your parentheses out here and your square bracket. Inside the square bracket, you can put the degrees of freedom comma n n is the sample size all right so again if i flip over my n is 514 and my degrees of freedom is one all right so that's both going to go both of those are going to go in the square brackets and then equals my chi-square statistic and then finally my p-value so for this problem we can say that the percent of unemployed differed significantly by student status and then write out my statement so parentheses the chi-square symbol brackets the degrees of freedom one the sample size 514 close brackets equals this the chi-square statistic 8.36 comma my p-value and again i'm going to write the exact p-value here whatever jas gives me i'm going to write for the p-value all right so now let's flip back and look at our second example all right, so for our second example, we want to look at the percent of students or the percent of people who exercise cross by whether or not they're a student. And so in this case, we already have our student in our column. So all we really need to do is take our job and push it back over and then go get exercise. So here's exercise. I can throw it over. And again, everything is ready for me. Now, first off, let's look at what's going on. So of the students, 48% of them exercise. Of the non-students, 44% of them exercise. And notice there's there's not a big difference between 48 and 44. And the same thing there's of the people who don't exercise, there's 51% are students. And of the non-students, 55% of them don't exercise. Notice there's not a big difference in those percentages. And that's leading us to our non-significant p-value. So in this case, our p-value is 0.5. Don't confuse that with 0.05, right? This is 50%. And so our p-value is 0.5. Therefore, the students okay, versus non-students is not significantly different of exercise. The percent of people who exercise is not significantly different by whether or not they're a student. All right? Okay. Now, the other key thing is note that notice that all of my buckets are greater than 5. 50, 182, 54, and 228. All of my buckets are greater than five, therefore I am good to use Pearson's chi-square. Let's look at one more example. Now, for our next example, I want to actually just look at students. <clears throat> so let's reset our, our box here. <clears throat> and in this case, I want to just look at students. So I'm going to go back to my data, and I'm going to go to my student column. And if I just select it once, I see that I have yes and no, whether or not they're students. In this case, I want to filter my data down to just those who are students. So I'm going to click on this checkbox. Notice it becomes an X. And what that does is that focuses or filters my data to only people who are students. So now let's go back to our test. In this case, I'm only looking at students. And I want to look at um, the COVID status, you know, COVID vaccine, whether or not they got a vaccine cross with whether or not they have a job. And basically the hypothesis is, is if you're a student, does the job says, if you have a job, are you more likely or less likely to have a COVID vaccine? So let's put job status <clears throat> on our columns and go down to COVID vaccine right here, yes or no, and put it on our rows. And the first thing I'll notice is my buckets. So again, my buckets now are job, yes, vaccine, yes, there's 67 people. Job, yes, vaccine, no, there's 18 people. Job no, vaccine yes, there's 16 people, and job no, vaccine no, there's only three people. The only three people, that's breaking our assumptions for using Pearson's chi-square. So we can't use Pearson's chi-square, but we can use Fisher's exact test. Now, how do I use Fisher's exact test in JASP? 
it's very simple. All I do is come over here to the odds ratio two by two only and I click it and notice that gives me my Fisher's exact test statistic down here. So the Fisher's exact test, the p-value is 0.758. Now the other thing of note in Fisher's exact test is that the actual test statistic is also the p-value. The p-value and the test statistic are the exact same thing. And so that leads me to, well, okay, number one, because I had less than five observations in one of my buckets, in this case it was three, um, therefore I had to use the Fisher's exact. To get Fisher's exact, I click on the odds ratio button and that gives me my Fisher's exact test and my p-value is 0.758. Now, notice that that's not significant. Now, if I go up to the, print, the um, percentages, I'm looking at uh, people who have a job, whether or not they had a vaccine was 78%. People who didn't have a job, percent of people who had a vaccine was 84%, and there's not a large difference there. And again, at this point, we're focused only on students, but it's not a significant difference, and my p-value is 0.75. So in order to write this in APA format, let's click over here, and here it is. I've looked all over the book. I've looked on the internet. I can't find the official APA format. So for our class, we're just going to make our own. And basically, we're just going to say Fisher's exact equals the statistic, which is 0.758 comma the p-value. And again, these are the same value. The statistic and the p-value for Fisher's exact are the exact same. And so the p-value is 0.758. And again, you could say in the student population, there was not a significant difference between the people who had a job and didn't have a job and the percent of people who had a COVID vaccine. All right. That's the end of this video. Thank you all very much.